And we start in Washington, where Senate Republicans have lost the support they need to pass their bill to repeal and replace Obamacare. Already facing a record low approval rating, this is another blow to President Trump's number one priority. Trying to breathe new life into the bill, the President has been urging senators to repeal now replace later. But as Suzanne Malveaux reports, that's an unlikely solution. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell giving up on Republicans' seven-year effort, now pushing to repeal Obamacare without a replacement plan in place. The latest effort collapsing after two more Republican senators announced their opposition to the bill simultaneously on Monday night, ensuring that the plan would fail. McConnell still planning to hold a vote in the coming days on a 2015 measure that would repeal Obamacare but delay it taking effect for two years while a replacement bill is crafted. President Trump responding to the setback on Twitter, tweeting Republicans should just repeal failing Obamacare now and work on a new health care plan that will start from a clean slate. Dems will join in. This despite the fact that a straight repeal has little to no chance of passing and it could leave millions uninsured and the insurance markets in turmoil. The president's proposal starkly different from the promise he made on the campaign trail. Obamacare is a disaster. Repeal it and replace it. Repeal and replace. Repeal and replace Obamacare. We're going to repeal it. We're going to replace it. We're going to get something done. President Trump was trying to drum up support for health care, hosting a handful of senators at a White House dinner Monday night, as Senators Lee and Moran announced their opposition. The president expressing optimism earlier in the day. The Republican senators are great people, but they have a lot of different states. Some states need this, some states need that, but we're getting it together and it's, uh, it's going to happen. Right, Mike? Yes, I think. Democratic minority leader Chuck Schumer immediately celebrating the defeat, tweeting, this second failure of Trump care is proof positive that the core of this bill is unworkable. As Republicans continue to be split about the path forward, with conservatives pushing the clean repeal effort and moderates like Senator John McCain calling for bipartisanship. McCain stressing that Republicans should receive input from members of both parties as they work to produce future legislation. Suzanne Malveaux reporting there. Mr. Trump also showing a little bit of frustration together with a little bit of optimism. Just a few moments ago, he tweeted this. We were let down by all the Democrats and a few Republicans. Most Republicans were loyal, terrific and worked really hard. We will return. Now, we're also learning more about who attended the meeting last year with Donald Trump Jr. and that Russian lawyer. We now know there were at least eight people there, twice as many as first disclosed. Trump Jr.'s attorney tells CNN that he has spoken by phone to the eighth person who was in the room at Trump Tower, but he declined to name the man. He's believed to be a representative of the Russian father and son who helped set that meeting up. Well, Trump Jr.'s attorney says the man is a U.S. citizen and was not in employed by the Russian government. And another strain on the US-Russia uh, relations, the diplomatic compounds the US seized last year that Russia wants back. On Monday, two high-level officials discussed the matter in Washington. The US closed those compounds late last year as part of President Obama's sanctions against Russia for meddling in the US election. Past US administrations have accused Russia of using those compounds for spying activities. Russia says they were weekend retreats for diplomats. So let's go to Matthew Chancellor. He joins us live from Moscow and there have been some reports that the US and Russia may be getting close to a deal on those compounds Matthew what are you hearing well, they, they, they certainly staged this important meeting that you mentioned in Washington uh, yesterday between the Under Secretary of State Tom Shannon in the United States and his, his sort of Russian counterpart, the Deputy Foreign Minister uh, here. Um, uh, but there's been remarks from that Deputy Foreign Minister, Sergei Rabkov, uh, and he said this, you know, to say that we are on the verge of resolving this would be an exaggeration. He said that we warned the Americans that we need an unconditional return of the property, otherwise retaliatory measures will follow. That's what he, he told the, the state news agency uh, here in Russia. So, yes, they are discussing the return of these diplomatic compounds, but they're nowhere near, it seems, uh, reaching a resolution to that. And, of course, the Russian Foreign Ministry and the Kremlin have said time and again that their patience 
uh, in all of this is, is running out. The Foreign Ministry has floated ideas about expelling, you know, uh, 30 or more US diplomats from their various posts in the Russian Federation. They've also talked about the possibility of seizing US diplomatic property in Russia as well as a sort of retaliation for what, what happened to them. Um, and I think this whole issue, remember, uh, uh, reflects the, the, the disillusionment that is uh, at work here in Russia right now with the ability of the Trump administration to deliver what it said it was going to do, which is to build a better relationship with Russia. That isn't happening, and the Russians are losing patience, Andrew. Well, just, just elaborating on that point, what, how would you describe the mood in, in Moscow towards the Trump administration? So much was, was, was expected, uh, so little has been delivered. Yeah, and I, I think that that does characterise the mood, and it's been something of a roller coaster because when when Trump first came to power, came to office, uh, he was seen very much as the Kremlin candidate. I mean, the state television here painted a very rosy picture of him. Expectations were sky high that he was going to be able to, you know, turn around that that sticky relationship with Russia, cooperate over international terrorism in Syria, which to a certain extent is now happening, but also, you know, kind of uh, see the world from a more Russian point of view, I suppose, from a similar perspective, because of the domestic political situation in the United States, uh, Trump has just not been able to do that. And as I say, that's led to an enormous amount of disappointment in Russia. It briefly kind of blipped upwards, I suppose, the, the sense of optimism in Russia when the two presidents met for the first time at the G20 in summit, uh, what was it, earlier this month. Um, and, and there was much higher expectations, you know, peaking that, you know, maybe something could be done. They seem to have a personal chemistry between the two of them. Uh, but obviously, uh, a first step from a Russian point of view would be the return of these diplomatic compounds that were of course confiscated by the previous Obama administration as punishment to Russia for allegedly meddling in, in the US election. They want to see that change but you know, again uh, President Trump is hamstrung when it comes to taking action um, against the Russians or, or, or giving back these compounds. Mm, OK, Matthew, thanks very much for that. Matthew Chance joining us live from Moscow. Now, the Trump administration is sending mixed messages, meanwhile, on Iran's nuclear compliance. It's certified that Iran is still making good on the terms of the nuclear deal, but the administration...